Admiral's Log, August 1st, 1939. Two years have slipped by. Years that I've spent more in the confines of meeting rooms than on the deck of a ship feeling the sea breeze. The life of an admiral, they said, would be one of command and decision. Yet, here I am, bogged down by endless meetings, strategies and planning sessions that stretch into the horizon. The cheery sailor in me has been shadowed by a growing bitterness. This isn't the admiralty I dreamed of. In the midst of this administrative quagmire, however, the Navy has not been idle. We've built several of the new class of heavy cruisers, dubbed the Sokolov cruisers in a moment of what now feels like misplaced optimism. These ships, my namesakes, are meant to be the pinnacle of our naval strength, yet they sit untested, their potential unknown. It's a strange irony, crafting the very tools for a battle I long to use, only to see them idle. But the winds are changing, carrying whispers of war on their currents. It seems the world is teetering on the brink of conflict once more. If there's truth to these whispers, then the Sokolov cruisers will soon face the crucible for which they were created. This looming war could be the chance to break free from the chains of bureaucracy, to lead from the front as I've always intended. The thought of war should not bring relief, yet I find a bitter kind of solace in it. The prospect of action, of proving the might of our fleet and the worth of my cruisers, stirs something within me. Perhaps this is the opportunity to reclaim the essence of what it means to be an admiral, not just a planner and a strategist, but a leader in the heart of battle. As I pen this entry, the bitterness gives way to a renewed focus. War is coming, and with it, a chance to prove myself and my ships. The Sokolov cruisers will remain untested no longer. We will stand ready to defend our nation and demonstrate the true power of the Soviet Navy. The horizon may be dark with the promise of conflict, but it is on this dark horizon that we will shine the brightest. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 36. It's been a while. It is now August 1939 and the Austrians, well, and I guess and the Hungarians are at it again. We are at war with Austria-Hungary. Um, this is not great news, as it kind of caught me a little bit off guard, meaning that my fleet is not ready. My research, however, is progressing fairly quickly. So with that, I might be able to get quite a bit of, well, catch up, if you want to call it that, um, because I'm still very far behind. I'm not sure if I'll ever catch up, but at least I'm getting like the, the Mark V 2 incher. Which is nice, it was supposed to come out in 1931, it's now eight years later, who's counting? Anyway, at war with Austria-Hungary. I'm not the only one. The Germans are also uh, gobbling up territory over here. And you can see that they are making some decent progress, actually, well, planning to take over Austria. Which would be really bad news, because losing one of your core provinces is going to make an absolute dent in your economy. Um, they are also working their way over here into Ukraine. Um, yeah. Okay. Austria does seem to be doing a heck of a job defending the place. And I'm not sure why the Germans aren't making any more progress than they are. Because the RMB forces... Like, if you add up the losses, both sides, the Germans should win this. Do they have such... Like, army logistics for the Germans is, is 100%. And for Austria, Hungary, it's also 100%. I'm not sure why Germany is not winning this fight. I would love to try and push in from, um, well, any of the neighboring territories, because this has suddenly turned into a very, very wealthy province. Well, territory, I guess. What is my state of the army? <laughs> 5%. <laughs> okay. Um, time to activate the Black Sea Fleet. And the fleet over, I guess, in the central Mediterranean. Do I still have that? No, I don't have that bit there anymore. Okay, uh, let's activate the fleet. Now, the Black Sea Fleet, where are they? That's the Baltics. Uh, these are going to be the new heavy cruisers. I have been building a lot of them. And this is going to be their test. You are in Tripoli. Activate this ship. 
We're going to have the ships in the North Atlantic not activated. Sea of Japan's not required. Well, I guess I could activate the ships out in the North Atlantic of Santa Cruz. Because those ships could be sent over towards the Med. Let's activate them. Um, let's see. North Atlantic. That's the Europa. Yep, she's still around. The Pilter. We have... Uh, the Perm. These guys have been all renovated into 1932 refits, and since then I was mostly rebuilding my economy, so it's not like I've exactly done a whole lot to upgrade these ships beyond that, because I simply didn't have any new tech anyway. As for the rest, I don't really want to take too much away from Germany, because I do... Well, I do mistrust the Germans a little bit. You never quite know when they're going to blow up. Uh, when they do, it's going to turn sour. But what I can try and do is improve relations with them. Making it so that I don't have to worry about them. And ideally, I'd even turn into an alliance with them. Because then we can kind of double-team Austria-Hungary between us. And that would free up the fleet over here. Now, the Mediterranean over here, this is, of course, a potential area where I could be losing ships. Transport ships, that is. I can hunt down their transport ships in the Adriatic. And what are we going to face when we get there? Uh, one battleship, ten heavy cruisers, ten light, seven DDs, and three submarines. All right. That is a bit much for a couple of ships to chew up. So let's activate the Black Sea Fleet anyway. Oh, sorry, the, uh, the, Archang uh, the Baltic Fleet. Making sure that we have overwhelming numbers and potentially be able to blockade the place. Somehow, of course, the AI will always get their pound of flesh. They will always get their economy fixed. Uh, as opposed to Russia. But so be it. One month later, Spain is next. War erupted between the Soviet Union and Spain. I'm not sure what all of these parties are suddenly trying to do. Ah, the relations with Germany have improved. But, well, here we are. No, you're not going to get any of my ships. The Spanish, well... Like, I'd love to put them out of their misery. They still have two battleships, a couple of heavies and some lights. Their economy is... <laughs> not great. Let's put it that way. And as such, I don't really expect them to be a big threat. It is still, however, going to be fairly impossible to push into this. Because that requires 147,000 men with 5% armor logistics. And of course that will improve once the fleet actually gets activated. Uh, with armor logistics like that, I'll never be able to take that fight to them. As for the Austria-Hungarian fleets. Light cruisers there. Destroyers and light cruisers there. There's heavy cruisers there. There's heavy cruisers there. I wonder where their big stuff has gone. Where are the battleships? It's not entirely unlikely for these guys to be sending them to all sorts of weird and wonderful spots on the map. You never quite know where they end up. Like... Why are you here? What? New Providence is controlled by Austria-Hungary? Okay. I didn't know that the Grand Bahamas... <laughs> just off the coast of Miami we're now controlled by Austria-Hungary I'm not sure how the hell they pulled that off interesting development it is good for me because it means that they have to devote some of their fleet power here if they want to hold on to that it also means that this area the eastern North America potentially even the North Atlantic can be subjected to blockading or some form of attacking their naval units like their merchantmen That'd be nice. Let's see what we can do once we actually have the fleet online. One month later, the United States sends us a telegraph threatening us with war. Now, I can just push the United States away, or I can give them 283 million. I don't want to do that. And so we are at war with the United States. Isn't that lovely? I'm not sure exactly what the United States is planning on doing. Because as far as I know, they have absolutely no influence over here. They have no territories. Nor I have any territories on their side. 
So why the US suddenly decided to barge into a war, I don't know. But again, it doesn't seem to take the US much these days. What are we going to do with our naval logistics or army logistics? We're at, <laughs> We're at 6%. Wow. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, Santa Cruz fleet. The Apostle, the Europa, and the Perm. Link up with the rest of the fleet in Tripoli. Oh, we're still commissioning the Piotr. Fine. Uh, the rest of the fleet. Move to Tripoli. That's going to be your staging ground. Riga is empty. Tallinn has a heavy cruiser. I'm going to leave the whole German flank completely undefended. Nothing bad has ever come of that. So we should be able to trust the Germans. Right? No ships there. Let's continue improving relationships with the Germans so that I really don't have to worry about that. What the hell? Why am I not? Mine's already four. Must have been one of those side effects from going to war with, uh, well, everybody else. As for the guys over here, there's two submarines. And that's about it. I'm wondering if I can invade these, but I rather doubt it. The reason being, I simply don't have the naval logistics. So I'm going to activate the entirety of the fleet and hopefully get some army logistics back because I just need more tonnage. I need more ships and hopefully my army logistics is going to improve as those ships are going to come online. The first battle is upon us. It is none other than the Europa with some assistance from our Greek allies. I think the Greek have been our ally for the last 30 years or something. They've been very, very loyal. And they keep buying my ships. So I have the old Sova, the old Ruski, and the very old Novik class light cruiser. Uh, we're fighting a heavy cruiser of the Kaiserin und Königin Maria Theresia Helgoland class. This thing is armed with a couple of 9-inchers. It comes with a load of torpedoes. Not fun. Keep it at range. Also pretty quick, 33.7. This guy, light cruiser, meteor class, 35 and a half knots. Um, a couple of torpedo tubes, but beyond that, nothing too serious. The real challenge is going to be catching these things and, well, getting into range, building enough accuracy to actually try and take it down. Because I really don't want to use the Greek ships. Um, I know I built them, I designed them at some point, and my hopes for them are uh, relatively low. Now, the Europa has been upgraded. She has a stereoscopic 4 rangefinder. She has turboelectric engines. She has the better uh, armor scheme, better barbettes, better anti torpedo launcher or anti torpedo protection. Anti flooding systems, of course. I'm still running around with Citadel 3. It's a bit old. That's something I would definitely like to improve. Now, let's get the Abrek to follow the Europa. As for the DDs, I'm going to keep those on screening duty. Hello! Nice work. Good lord. So, what are you like? Yeah, that's a lot of torps. That's a lot of torps. The more important question is, how far can you fling those? Eight and a half clicks. Okay. I stay outside of eight and a half clicks, we're gonna be fine. Slow this whole piece of junk down to about 17 knots. And I'm saying piece of junk, but I mean, it's the Europa. She can handle the insult. She has been through a lot. She has seen all the actions I think we've done so far. She's been involved in one way or another in every single war that we fought. So yeah, she has been monumental and instrumental in these wars. The real question is, can she still hold her ground? Can she still hold her own in this new era? And I'm not too sure. Looks like the CL is smoking up. No, we're not going to shoot the CL. We're going to shoot the battleship. Oh, sorry, the heavy cruiser. The CL can come later. CL's torpedoes... Extend to here? Okay. That's not strictly what I would want to see. What is with my accuracy? Oh! We're running cadets because the ship just got reactivated. So I can't shoot for shit. 
Well, that's lovely. Yeah. Um, I forgot that for, let's say, the first couple of months, really, you need to keep your fleet back. Because they generally don't do very well, as they simply don't have any kind of crew training. Even the Greek ships are crewed by cadets. Oh, not the, the Abrek. I'm not too sure why that is. Europa is getting burned down by a heavy cruiser. Dude. At least we got some accuracy now. Well, you'd think. Can we pen this? What the hell? And I thought my cruisers were bad. Come on. Hit. Decent. H-E-it. Europa's already lost 10% of her crew. This is getting a little out of hand. H-E volley might be able to pen that ship. Yeah, partial only. No, never mind. You got the, the bad H-E. Well, I mean, not the bad HE, it's great for setting fires, but it's not very good at penning cruisers. The ship just launched torps. Come around. This is when the turbo electric drive is going to be instrumental in keeping her out of the fight. What the hell? Isn't it lovely when torpedoes suddenly start growing a brain and change direction? Okay, slow her back down. Tell the Abrek to follow again. Is the CL gonna join our torpedo fiesta? No, not as of yet. <laughs> okay, I need to start spending a lot of money on crew training. I'm used to far better performance out of the Europa. It's just not cutting it with this. Don't, don't do that. You and your torpedo nonsense. Lost 15% of crew. At this rate, I might need to disengage because I simply don't have the people anymore. Not like we're going to miss a whole lot of cadets. But if the, the ship surrenders, then we don't have the whole Europa at all. Also, I've taken her down 7%. She's taken me down about 20%. That is very concerning. Can we actually get a couple of really good shots into that ship now? Pretty please. The answer is no. Oh, they're coming about. I just sent another torpedo my way. And several more. Increase the flank. CL, turn around. I think it might be better to disengage from this fight. Because I don't see myself winning this one. This ship is, however, running low on HE shells. Her AP capability... No. Yeah, she's running low on... Wow, weather change. Okay, we can use this storm to get out. Retreat. I completely forgot about the mechanic of crew just being completely inept once they get the ship reactivated. Yurikov, get out of here. Sorry, Yurozovsky. Uh, We're gonna put our smoke screen up in a fog, in a storm. What could possibly go wrong? <clears throat> Less accuracy for you, please. Are you firing? Oh, you're firing AP ammo. Can you pen that? No, you can't. So, arguably, I could try and close the distance against the Kaiserin and try to engage her. But with those torpedo launchers and 43 torpedoes left, I'm not that interested. Europa is going to have to sail away to fight another time. Thankfully, this little skirmish didn't actually cost me any ship. Uh, the Europa, however, might need a bit of repairs and... Uh, I don't know, a couple of hundred new cadets. 
we're gonna have to adjust some sliders on our finances because as it stands i don't really need all of my research i mean i'd love to get more research sure it's just that activating every single ship in my fleet on a fairly strained economy already is very expensive so that means i'm gonna have to save money on research and make sure that i pump a lot more money into crew training well i guess like any money into crew training because I am not spending anything. Let's go for 100% crew training. That should very quickly ramp up the amount of crew that we're type or the type of crew that we're going to be getting. As for money, we're bleeding 143 million a month, and that's with a naval fund of 2 billion. I am thankfully building a couple of new ships, and I should be going. Oh, I forgot a couple of ships here. Um, I should be getting those ships out in a couple of months, especially the Kazan. Is going to be a nice, nice, nice price tag. Um, this is going to give me a lot of money. Just selling this thing off. And then we got a couple of the heavy cruisers. Uh, interestingly, they want the Yarkovs, not the Sokolovs. All right. So that was our first little scrap with the Austro-Hungarian fleet. The rest of the fleet is still arriving. Europa is going to take a couple of months to repair. But that'll also hopefully allow her crew some time to train up. Now, it's time to also start looking into protecting my transport ships. You know, the ones that I've been carefully rebuilding over the last couple of decades. I have lost ships in the Bering Sea, I have lost ships in the Philippine Sea, and in the Black Sea. So, to counter the whole situation in the Black Sea, I have sent another battlecruiser here. The Perm is now stationed in this area, and hopefully that will make sure that we don't lose any further transports here. As for the Bering, I'm not even sure why we're losing ships over there Bering Strait? No, not the Denmark Strait Yes, I forgot about this little piece, the Bering Sea um, This is where we're actually losing ships because I have zero power projection and the US apparently has some in the form of a light cruiser and another light cruiser I didn't even know I have a port over there But yeah, this is going to cost me transports and we also lost some in the Philippine Sea, which is probably because of this little uh, port over here. I think it's time to start taking this off of the Americans. I'm just not sure what it's part of. Oh, it's part of Guam. Very poorly protected. Let's send the ships out. You, you. <clears throat> Where is the rest of that fleet? Here. If the Americans want to play, we're going to play. The OG Sokolov's going to join here. I really hope that Japan doesn't get into anything stupid, but it looks like they very well might. And I really do not want to start fighting everybody at the same time. Not again. Oh boy. Are we in danger? The Austro-Hungarians have sent a monster battleship. 93,000 tons. This thing is awfully slow, but it's packing eight 17-inch guns. I feel way out of my depth. We have a heavy cruiser group and a light cruiser group. Thankfully, we've already seen these, so I know what to expect. Um, the perm with eight 13-inch guns is completely dwarfed by this behemoth. She's trained with her crew. She, I, got, got, <laughs> I got cadets all over the place. I'm going to try and run away. I do not want this fight. Like, I don't want it at all. But I really, really, really do not want it now. Now, thankfully, this battle is going to give me a look at this ship. Sometimes these things are extremely poorly built. But this thing does not appear to be one of those. Sure enough, this turret placement's a little odd. The rest of the ship, it's like a modernized dreadnought. Complete with casemates and everything. Um, they have lost sight of my ship so far, but this thing being 93,000 tons, I can keep an eye on it. The perm is doing 27 knots, and the other ones are doing 29. We're going to run the hell away, because this thing can probably still reach me at this range. No, we're just shy of their gun range. 27 clicks. Still, this is scary. I didn't even know the AI built ships this big. I can build ships this big, but I wouldn't really know how to afford that. Because a ship like that, I think we've established in episode 33 or so. 
And that was a 60, 65,000 ton battleship. That's going to go for 2 billion. So this thing is 50% bigger than that. I'm not even sure how to fight this. Thankfully made it out of that one without actually firing a single shot, nor receiving one. Uh, this has completely caught me off guard. I have no idea how to try and counter that. Because the way that that ship is built, plus escorts, like this is a game changer. If this thing would not have light cruisers for escort, I could probably build like a hundred submarines and engage it. I can't. I just can't. So I'm not sure what we're going to do next. Uh, finally, we might get an opportunity to test out the Sokolov, though, against the Vilibit Meteor Class Light Cruiser. Could be a nice walk in the park. And if I can pick engagements like these and win every single time, ideally without taking too much damage myself, I might be able to rack up some victory points. With that, I might be able to go to peace with Austria-Hungary again, because... It's going to be either going to peace, or if you fight that thing, you're going to go to pieces. Whichever happens first. And the way that that ship is built, like 93,000 tons with 17-inch guns, that scares me. What also scares me is that there is a light cruiser around that has eyes on me, and that has torpedo launchers. I have sonar too, so I should be relatively safe. There it is. We actually spotted that, what, 20 clicks out? That's impressive. I thought that we wouldn't be able to do that. Especially in a, a weather situation like this. Of course it's smoked up now. First time we're ever going to use these ships. I wonder how they're going to perform. Against the light cruiser. Shorter range we might be able to make HU work. Longer range we're going to use AP. All right, here it goes. 11 clicks out, which puts me squarely into their torpedo range. And their 7-inch gun range. My crew is green, which is already quite the improvement from cadets. Like, it'll still likely not be extremely accurate, but at least we're getting about 15%. Blocked? How much armor you got? <laughs> Sometimes I swear my ships are just not even trying. Oh, now we're going to have to wait for all the turrets to come around. I know that there are most likely more than one torpedo in the water, which is why I'm trying to turn around as much as possible. Can we please hit something? It's four kilometers away. Thank you. My ship is burning in several locations already. What the hell, dude? That's your level of accuracy? That's what you think I want from this ship? Jesus. HE. We've lost 10% of our crew. At this rate, I'm going to lose to extensive fire. Turn away. Like, genuinely, I'm going to lose to extensive fire. We're even flooding? What, from a 7-inch gun? Yes, from a 7-inch gun. Ooh. Now, I know that some of you have sent in the, com in the comments that the Sokolov class is going to be a disaster. You might be right. Like, it's a bad ship. If I cannot take down a light cruiser... What are we doing? 691 million for one of those things, though. Mine is, like, less than half the price. And it looks like it'll actually sink, too. Oh, Jesus. Yep, I'm flooding. And with a damage control party like this, I'll actually lose the ship? Oh, my God. Run. And so far as there's running at four and a half clicks out. Five. We're going to see holding at about 8%. 5, 6. Oh, man. <clears throat> this is not good. So they got pretty capable light cruisers. Expensive as fuck. 
And they got a massive battleship. Potentially more than one of those massive battleships. I'm not even sure if I can keep this campaign going. I got enemies all around. I'm so far behind with my tech. I have, at the moment, no plan to come back from this. Not a one. And building a new set of ships is going to take at least 14 months and probably longer than that. Most likely 16 to 18 if you want to get something decent. And it's going to cost me so much money. Which I don't have because my economy is shit. So at the moment, I think the campaign might be pretty screwed. So there was our first real engagement. Lost one heavy cruiser already. Nice. Now to counter all of this Austro-Hungarian firepower, I'm looking at the ship designer and I'm just not sure. Experimental heavy cruisers? That's basically the Sokolov. The Sokolov displaces 11,800 tons. That's the minimum of this ship, I think. If I max this ship out, I might be able to add a bit more gimmicks to it. But I believe that the armor is still fairly limited. Like 8 inches of belt armor. That's the best you can get. If you're looking at like a modern battleship, you got that ridiculous price tag, which eventually leads up to something like the Moskva for $1.8 billion. Building that is going to take 28 months. So before you actually have that ship into service, you're looking at almost three years. It is entirely possible that the Soviet, the, sorry, that the Austro-Hungarians are using the, what is that, like the 17-inch the Mark I. But it's not something I can really bank on. If they have the 17-inch Mark III, yeah, that's going to make some really sizable holes in my ships. Alternatively, you could go, well, just mount torpedo launchers on the ship. Uh, fling 21 or 22 inch torpedoes in their face. But my torpedo propulsion is still standard or fast. They have sonar. My torpedoes will get detected the moment that they leave the tube. At 12.7 kilometers out. So torpedo launchers are not an option either. I don't really know what to do. And that's a first. So, I hope that you will join me for the next episode, because we have some things to fix with the Austro-Hungarians. And I, for one, am not sure how to do it. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you soon for the next episode.